Hey guys, uh, I'm going to do a quick review on a generator that I just purchased uh, about a week ago. That's the Ryobi 1800 running watt, 2200 starting watt digital inverter generator. So this video is going to be, try and keep it quick, maybe five minutes. And I really just want to kind of give you an initial opinion of it and um, also why we went with this generator over a couple others that we were looking at. In particular, the Honda EU2000 and the uh, Generac IQ 2000, I believe. So <clears throat> when you take it out of the box, it's packaged okay. There was some damage on the box, but uh, we opened it up at the department store and found that there was no damage, so we were okay with it. So when you buy it, it comes with owner's manual, easy to read, and yeah, easy instructions. I didn't read it. Um, we have generators, so I'm familiar with uh, maintenance and how to put oil in them. All that fun stuff. They do give you 12 ounces of engine oil. I think the maximum capacity is 13.5, so they give you just an, just under that limit, so you don't get any oil spills or overages. Comes with a 120 DC uh, battery charger with alligator clips, so that's really cool. And they also give you a screwdriver. You know, I appreciate the screwdriver, but if you're buying a generator and you do not have a screwdriver, you may want to rethink some things. So, so the primary purpose of this generator is going to be purely recreational. We're going to use it for camping. Uh, we have other generators at our house. We have uh, a generator for powering our house when the lights go out. We're in the Pacific Northwest. We're in the woods. We get a lot of storms. Our power does go out sometimes for days on end. And um, so we do have generators for that and other things as well. Um, when we were looking at generators, again, we were looking at the Honda U2000 and the uh, Generac, or I was looking at the Generac uh, IQ2000. And one of the major factors uh, just obviously was cost. Um, this was on sale for like five, around 550 or something, 558. And the Honda was, I think, $999. I could definitely afford the difference, but I could not justify it based on the fact that we're only going to use this thing maybe eight or 10 times in a year uh, in a camping season maybe put 20, 30 hours if we're lucky on it. So this is purely a out-of-pocket recreational expense that uh, I just could not justify spending over a thousand dollars for something that we're just not going to use that much. Um, so you know, Hondas are great and so are Generax and, and even Yamaha. If it's, if, if my one word of advice is if you're going to be using the generator more than just you know what more than just what we are or how we are I would suggest spending a little extra money and going with a Honda or a Yamaha they are great products I've owned them before I own them now and uh, but again this is going to be dedicated stored in a bay in our RV we've got a um, 18 foot bunkhouse and it's going to be stored in there pretty much all year round um, so that was the one factor was obviously the cost. The other was uh, the fact that this thing's really portable. You can see here, it's got these little like rollerblade wheels on it. They're kind of chintzy, um, but it's really convenient to have this handle, telescopic handle that comes out. And it's kind of chintzy, eh, but if you're, if you're really, um, you know, dainty with it, <laughs> you can, uh, I'm sure, get some longevity out of that handle. But just kind of demo it for you. I mean, this thing just moves around, right? Just really, really easy. Slide that back in, and you're good to go. The other thing was, um, I don't, I'm not sure, and this is probably a preference thing, but the other generators, or the other kind of suitcase model generators, they have this like handle here, right? If you've ever picked up a Honda, if you picked up a Generac and even the Yamaha, they have this weird, this, this like, it's, it, it literally looks like a suitcase, right? And that just doesn't really work for me. Picking it up, off balance, I want my wife to be able to move this thing in out of her truck if need be. Um, so having the two handles on the side, I didn't really realize how convenient it was until I actually opened the box and took it out and actually pulled it out. Um, it just, you, you can maneuver it so easy with using two hands and having the ability to move it around uh, on the wheels. So that's huge. So a little bit about it, again, it's 1800 running watts, 2200 surge. And what does that mean? Basically, you can run consistently, you can draw up to 1800 watts off of this um, generator without it really stressing or maxing out um, the load on it. And it also has a couple hundred extra watts starting capacity. So if you're planning on using, for us, uh, big thing was, you know, I don't want to worry about when, when we dry uh, camp and we're using batteries, you have to really be conscious of what you're using, if you're draining batteries, you know, if you're using a fan, all of all of those things, right? So 
for me, having the couple extra 100 watts, that's pretty big because then you don't have to worry about, okay, do, can I have this on? Can I have that on? Let me let me shut this breaker off. Um, I, can I run a toaster and also my fan or TV at the same time? This gives you plenty of wattage. You can do all that. The only thing I can't run in my camper is um, the air conditioner, and we may end up getting another unit just to be able to do that, um, but that that's, uh, that's a what-if right now. So a couple things about the generator. <clears throat> So it comes with your standard 120 volt, two receptacles. You can parallel these. And I think we may end up doing that, not just for camping, but um, I have a Generac uh, 5500, Generac 5500 watt, um, just a portable gasoline generator for my house that we use. We have it uh, connected into a, the house through a uh, transfer switch. We're in the Northwest, we lose power sometimes, so uh, having a generator is kind of nice. And I thought of just, you know, I may just get two of these, parallel them, and uh, everything's gas in our house, and we don't draw too much wattage. So we may actually just get uh, two of these, parallel them, and get rid of our big, uh, you know, 150-pound generator. And uh, these are also really fuel-efficient, and they're quiet as well. So a couple other things here. One is uh, the overload sensor. If you put too much load on it, it shuts off or it it stops generating power. And this light will either turn red, I think, or it blinks. I can't remember. And uh, you just have to shut the unit off, turn it back on. The other thing is the low oil sensor. So if you ever get too low in oil, you should be changing these things really every... If, if you're going to be storing it like we are, probably every season we'll do it. But I think 50 hours or so is the is roughly about when you should be changing them. It also has uh, a USB, well, two USB ports here, which I don't think we'll actually use, but it's kind of convenient. And it also has an auto idle, what uh, I think Honda calls eco mode or, or uh, Generac calls eco mode. So that's pretty unique. And then it also has the, uh, the uh, DC, 120 DC connector. So when I initially set this thing up, I took it out of the box, put the oil in it, probably put about a half a tank, maybe a little bit less of gas. I think I probably pulled this thing five, six times until it cranked up. So not too bad. It it definitely uh, it, it beat my expectations because I we bought some generators and man, you got to crank on the, the, some of those things like 30, 40 times to get them to start. So that was really uh, pleasantly surprising. And um, I'll, I'll actually speaking of, I'll kind of kick it on here. It's probably about say, six o'clock at night, so but that's okay. I've got it facing out of my garage and. My neighbors aren't too close to me, so um, I'll start this thing on just regular mode, so I'll keep the idle high. And I haven't started for a couple days, so I'll put it on uh, put it on cold start here, and let's see how many cranks we need to get this thing started. I'm going to guess three, but we'll see. One. Two. That's on regular mode. Keep in mind I'm in the garage. So I'll turn it down here. So I'll turn idle on. Um, when you start it up initially, it does um, kind of go through a high rev cycle, and then it'll it'll uh, cut down. Uh, it'll probably um, you know drop maybe about 70% or so in, in volume on uh, on standard idle. But I'm in my garage, so it's going to be uh, a little bit louder but I'll do a video specifically for the noise test maybe a little bit later. And um, compared to, I'll shut it off real quick. So compared to a Honda, I would say it is a little bit louder. We actually have some good friends who we camp with quite often. They, they do a lot of camping, so um, they, they use the heck out of their Honda. But it's a little bit louder, um, not not too much, manageable. But you know, you're camping, and you don't. No generator is going to be quiet, and you know, you're you're paying four hundred dollars less for a generator, so you shouldn't expect it to be a Honda Whisper. So uh, overall, I'm pretty impressed with this thing. I'd say that uh, it's definitely met my expectations so far. Uh, we have not put it in, under any serious load for any extended amount of time. Um, so I'll make a follow up video once I have a chance to do that. But all in all, this little guy, great little value for us. I think we paid less than 600 out the door, and um, it's going to be it's going to be a nice addition to our camper and to our uh, our camping season. So, all right, guys, I'll try and follow up with some other videos, maybe uh, showing you having it actually hooked up to my trailer, and then also uh, do a sound test as well. All right, thanks, guys.